Now a key part of being human is the way in which we walk, upright and on two legs, bipedal. And the evolution of bipedalism um, is a very important development in the evolution of humans. Also important was the transition from the very early bipeds, uh, like Australopithecus afarensis, which was made famous by the skeleton Lucy, to the endurance walkers and runners of our own genus Homo. So starting with Homo erectus and ourselves Homo sapiens. So the way in which um, our ancestors walked on the landscape will affect the way in which they would forage for food, they would get raw materials in and ultimately migrate around the world. Now, despite over a hundred years of work on understanding the form and function of modern feet, um, very little is actually known, and even less about our ancestors. And the reason for that is that it's a really complex machine, 22 bones wrapped in, uh, in soft tissue, ligaments, tendons, muscles, and skin, and that works in a very complex way, interacting with the ground to balance us as we walk, to propel us forward, to slow us down, speed us up and it doesn't reveal its secrets very easily. Now, if you were trying to understand something about our ancestors' feet and the way in which they walk, um, you have some real challenges, because those 22 bones that make up the feet are very rarely preserved within the fossil record. There's lots of reasons for that. Partly they're very small and very difficult to identify, but also um, and they're often chewed and scavenged by carnivores because until recently our ancestors didn't really bury their dead so they were there um, a prey to carnivores and get badly damaged. So the fossil record isn't the ideal solution. Now a group of us believe that the fossil footprints are actually the way to understand the way in which our ancestors uh, walked and the evolution of locomotion within our own species. So fossil footprints actually record the forces um, between the foot and the ground, the pressure that's used to propel um, somebody forward, to slow them down, to balance them as they move. Now fossil footprints are relatively rare within the um, geological record. The oldest um, footprints are those at Latoli in northern Tanzania that are 3.75 million years old, probably um, left by Australopithecus afarensis, again the, the Lucy equivalent skeleton. And last year the team here at Bournemouth um, published in science the second oldest or details on the second oldest footprint site in the world. 1.5 million years old, believed to be attributed to Homo erectus. Now these footprints are of the first endurance runner and walker and provide a fantastic contrast with the earlier Latoli prints, the Lucy skeleton if you like. We can get some real understanding of this transition from simple bipeds to the endurance walkers and runners that characterize our own genus. Now how do we get that footprint data? Traditionally you would cast footprints with plaster or latex, but the modern way of doing that is to use an optical laser scanner, which produces a very detailed three-dimensional picture of the surface, 300,000 points within half a meter square with sub-millimeter accuracy. If you look at this scan of my face, you can see all the blemishes uh, within the face, the bags under the eyes, and it gives you an idea of the detail that can be achieved by optical laser scanning. It's lab-based technology, so we've got to protect it, customize the mountings to take it into the field to control ambient light levels and, and, and dust. We've been pioneering that at, at Bournemouth. We use a custom-made rig to mount the scanner in a horizontal configuration. We can case that in canvas to protect it from dust and, and light and then scan in the field, capturing the data. Now, we drive the scan and we capture the data using a piece of software known as RapidForm 2006, produced by INUS Technology. It's a fantastic, very user-friendly piece of software that allows us to capture the data in the field, do the immediate post-processing, so looking for holes, removing anomalies, and, and other problems with that. But it comes into its own, really, with visualization. It allows us to, to visualize the data in many different ways, with different color renders, different patterns that reveal different aspects of anatomy. We also output the scans as an ASCII 2 file, an XYZ coordinate data file, which allows us to upload to geographical information software to do various mapping-based exercises, multivariate statistics.
We also uh, export it to our own bespoke software, PSPM, which is a piece of software that's uh, developed from um, the same technology that's used to um, analyze MRI scans. And what it does is it produces out of a population of footprints, say um, half a dozen in a trail, a single print, a mean print, which allows us to, to study the central tendencies of that, that, that footprint. So footprints provide us a huge amount of inf information, whether it's about the distribution of people um, and our ancestors across the globe, whether it's understanding the mechanics of locomotion, the way in which they walked, the way in which that evolved. And it's research that we're taking forward in collaboration between Bournemouth, Liverpool um, University in a uh, project funded by the UK and Natural Environment Research Council. Thank you.